Our story is ultimately a story of perseverance, commitment, and hard work. And ultimately, yeah, we've been successful. But we got into fitness probably for the same reasons you guys did too. We wanted to help people. We wanted to give them hope. We wanted to help them feel better. But it always hasn't been easy. We're not going to get up here and give you some fluff story that, you know what, this just happens, don't worry about it, it's easy peasy. Um, we're going to tell you the truth. And, and it has been hard, it has been a struggle. And we want to take you into our stories, kind of our background. So I grew up in a family of all musicians. Everybody is musically inclined but me. Um, I'm sitting there with my piano instructor and she's like, hey Aaron, you know, I can tell you haven't been practicing very much. She goes, you know, you really need to pick between track or piano. I'm like, well, let me think about that. Uh, track. So um, off I went in sixth grade. I found my new love. I showed up in 1994, Michael Jordan high tops, and I was going to run. And I did. And, and I loved it. It was my passion. And I remember my dad saying, you know, hey, Aaron, why don't, why don't you just try to beat one person? And I'm like, Dad, I'm having a great time. I was coming in last every single race, but I was having a blast. But, you know, it, it kind of got to me, and I started watching the high school girls. I watched the USA track and field on TV. And I ultimately saw the people winning, and they got all the praise, and they got all the publicity. People wanted to be around them, and I was like, okay, there's something about that. So I started practicing. I started running. I started visualizing. And I went into my seventh grade year, and I started winning. And I fell in love. I fell in love with winning. To default, I love success. And when you don't experience success, it hurts. And it hurts bad. And it's been something that even to this day, I mean, honestly, I'm still, still trying to work through that. But I fell in love with that success. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I, I typically don't. Aaron does most of the talking, obviously. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to start with struggle um, because uh, I came in this world uh, struggling, struggle for life. I was I was born um, premature, ripped from my mother's arms and, and uh, placed on a, a, a ventilator. Uh, first 16 weeks of my life uh, in the hospital, fighting for my life. Obviously, I won that battle. I'm here in front of you guys t tonight. Um, but the struggle didn't stop there. Um, and I'm telling you this story because you'll see some of the, it, it'll make sense here at the end. Um, when I was in second grade, um, um, teachers were calling home, not doing the, very well in school. Um, you know, he must not be doing his homework. I was, I was. Um, the, you know, he may not be the smartest student, things like that. I was actually diagnosed with dyslexia. It could have been some of the things that, that I dealt with as a, as a newborn. Um, you know, I had to work through that issue and you know, started getting on the right track, feeling good about where I was at. And then, you know, sometimes in life you get thrown a curveball, and it happened to me. Um, nine days before Christmas, uh, my father was killed in a car accident. I was eight years old, and it basically changed my life forever. Um, mother uh, had, had raised three, I'd say, crazy uh, boys. Um, and, you know, I could have been a statistic. Um, based upon the research, I should have been a statistic, um, you know, not growing up with a, a father figure. Uh, a lot of times, you know, people go, the wrong direction. I could have went that way. Um, unfortunately, my brothers uh, weren't successful with that. Um, they've spent more of their adult life in prison than out of prison. Um, I tell you all this because, it, you know, I learned a lot as a young child uh, going through this struggle, but it's helped me later in life, obviously. You got to stand up, and if you want something, you got to go after it, and you got to make it happen. 
athletes. So we created Transformation Fitness and Wellness in 2007. Uh, what's interesting is we actually purchased this building. Somebody thought it'd be a great idea to give us a loan, uh, zero down, you know, those were the days. And basically, this building that we purchased was just north of downtown Indianapolis. And the first two floors are literally the commercial space. That was where we started our studio. And then we lived in the top two floors. And we still live to this day there. And what was happening is we were training clients. We were chasing payments. We were living month to month. We didn't have any vacations. We had no time freedom. We created an awesome business, guys. It's great. <laughs> yeah, we were successful. You know, we, we had full client loads. Both of us were working. Uh, we were maxed out. Um, you know, and a lot of you in this room have probably been there. Um, you know, we would, we would get up, train clients early in the morning, work on the business in the middle of the day. Um, I was trying to build operations, marketing, all those components, and then go back and train every day, day in and out, day out. And I, I, I told Aaron, I was like, this is not working. I need speed. I do, you know, I figured it out. I was like, there's no way. I cannot build all this from scratch. So I was doing some research. I came across uh, MPE, filled out the report. I did get a, a, the report, read through it. And I, was, I found some things that I, th I thought we could implement right away to give us some speed. Um, presented it to Aaron. No way. We're not doing it. No. We've gotten this far. We don't need help. We, we'll figure it out. So we went back, chasing payments, stressed out, living month to month, um, presented it to her again, months later. Okay, make the phone call. Uh, called, signed up, I think we went VIP right then. Mm -hmm. Dove head first in, in the systems and tools. We, again, we started, you know, train early in the morning, implement, finish the day training clients, and we started growing, but we dove head first in, into that process. Yeah, I told him, I said, I think we just bought a car, but we actually don't get it, so get ready. <laughs> so we started with Auto Closer, just like everyone else, and I fell in love with this process. It was so easy. It was awesome. And to this day, we still follow that pre-qualification script to a T. And then after that, we sit down. I have this gorgeous consultation room now. And what's so fun about it is... You sit down in that consultation, you give that person hope, you talk through their health history, you talk about their goals, and in my head, honestly, I'm like, pick one. You're gonna pick one. It's, it's not a no, it's pick one. And, and it went from selling those five, 10, 15 session packs, anybody do that? Yeah. So we were selling those five, 10, 15 packs, now we're selling 12, 12 months, like it's no big deal, and honestly, we could increase that, um, no problem. So, you know, the next step, obviously, you have all these clients. Um, you, you need duplicator. You need to duplicate yourself. You implement that. Um, you implement that, and, you know, everything is, is fine and easy to do. Um, well, we put that in place, and, you know, it solves a problem, right? You start hiring people. Everything's fine. I know you guys are you're seeing these names um, pop across the screen. Um, that is uh, 16 employees, former employees, within a five-year period. Still Most going. businesses would have failed with what we went through, okay? And, you know, when you hire somebody, you can, you know, the first, you know, three or four employees you, you bring on, uh, you could say, oh, that wasn't a good, good employee. That's just a bad hire. It was their fault, right? Mm -hmm. Number one, you could say that. Number two, you could say that. Number three, you get to number four, and you're like, oh, maybe, maybe that's, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe it's, maybe it's us. Maybe it's me. Look in the mirror, you know, and this is hard to do as, as, a, as a business owner, entrepreneur, and say, maybe I'm not good enough. What do I got to do to fix myself? Uh, and we did that. Um, we realized that we needed to be better leaders. Right. We can't lead a team if you're not a very good leader. Um, and you have to have the right people on the bus. You have to attract the right people, and we weren't doing that. So we dove into um, and, and started reading every day. Um, books like uh, from you know, John Gordon, John Maxwell. We were really trying to develop our leadership. And we still do that uh, to this day. And we talk about that and discuss that. We really worked on ourselves to make sure that we were attracting the right team and, and we were able to lead a team. So after that, we dove into Deep Core, getting into the marketing calendar, working off of a marketing calendar, 
And guess what happens when you actually know how many leads you need, what's your conversion rate? I mean, it's a flawless process. But what happened in 2012, all of a sudden we have 140 clients and our space is maxed out. It's uncomfortable. You walk in our studio, you couldn't even move. And we're ultimately losing clients because of that customer experience. That customer experience was awful. And it was too hot in the summer, it was freezing in the winter, and, and bags were piled up on the side because there was no room for anything. And what was crazy is I actually was doing a consultation and this guy comes in and, and he goes all the way up against the door and he goes, is it always like this? Is it always like this? And I said, what do you mean? And he was like, oh, there's all these people. And I was like, yeah, it's awesome. It's 6 p.m., 6 a.m., this is great. You know, and I'm like, oh, crap. And all of a sudden, we sat down to do this consultation. He starts sweating, he's uncomfortable, he's hot, it was loud. Guess what, guys, I didn't sell him. And I was like, man, I'm not gonna help that person. And so we started to see the flaws and deficiency in our studio. We were also, at this time, converting our business from 100% one-on-one training with horrible margins to 85% small group. But when you have that small group and not enough space, it's hard. Now, not to mention living above your space. And I was struggling. I hated work. I hated our business. I kept telling Tony, I can go back and get a sales job. I can sell. I sold durable medical equipment. I can do it again. I made a great living. And I'll give up our passion. He can figure it out. He'll, he can take care of this. And I couldn't sleep. I mean, I'm sorry. It just, it was tough. Like, we're sitting in our office, which we're sharing an office not only with each other, but now we have two dogs. <laughs> And the one dog snoring so damn loud that my customer is saying, is that somebody snoring? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, we have a bulldog, his name's Stafford, I'm so sorry. But, you know, I, I joke about it because otherwise I'd cry, but I was absolutely hating something that we built, that we built together. And I didn't know if we were gonna make it through this. And we were like, it shouldn't be this tough. We've built this great business. You know, we've got all these tools. And it, it, was, it was just too hard. I, I went to a neurologist because I couldn't sleep at night. I was waking up at 3 a.m. And I was like, this is it. Something is drastically wrong with me. I, you know, there's no way, but I, I created a horrible environment. It was a bad environment, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't rest. You know, just envision, you're bringing home groceries, heaven forbid you have a six pack, and your client's on the treadmill staring at you. <laughs> Talk about guilt. So, you know, it just, we saw the deficiencies in our space. And you know, when they talk about um, writing things down and having goals and, and a vision, how we, how we would, would do ours is, and you can see it on the screen here, is, you know, a mission for us is a big, hairy, audacious goal. And the one we had put down in, in 2012 was um, to get in this, in this new place, because obviously we created this business and we created this environment that was not healthy for us. And um, with that is, you know, writing this, this mission down, you know, obviously I showed it to our staff. We all had to work together for this. We got really specific in what we wanted, square footage, how many restrooms we want, the environment, things of that nature, it was all written down. And then I also found this picture online of what our studio, what I envisioned our studio to look like. So I, I you know, printed that off, put it in our office, um, put, you know, showed our staff. We had to look at that every day, that motivation. You gotta know what you're, look, what you're working towards you know, when you have those hard days. Um, because it wasn't that easy, not at all. Um, the journey to find our new facility, I'm gonna read a couple of these off because we went through five different deals uh, the first one's 907 North Delaware. Uh, was working on that deal. It fell through. I think a CrossFit went, in, went mm -hmm. into it. Uh, it was a great Good location. Um, Wall, uh, the, the Walnut uh, Street the guy wouldn't even work with us because we were fitness. We, you know, we don't know what we're doing. We run the business. We had good numbers. Um, 835 North Capitol. That's twice. You see that twice on there. Um, it, it, we, we had a contract on it the first time. Somebody came in with cash, bought it. So the person who bought it was going to flip it. We went back to him, was working that deal out. Uh, 
it fell through, cost us three grand in, in attorney fees. So, you know, we must be hard headed. Yeah. It's that vision. We still had that vision. We knew what we wanted. And then we had another building on capital fall through. So it's very important to have that vision and it, it will help you and guide you when things get tough. So imagine doing this with your spouse, let alone your business partner. And you know, this picture, it's a pretty good picture. I, I like it. But I want to show you reality. <laughs> I'm pretty much pulling his hair out all the time. Poor guy. He's like, yes. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a few couples, partners, spouses out here in the room. It's tough. It's not easy. And this is one heck of a guy because he puts up with so much of my crap, literally. And, and I'm stubborn, I'm hard headed, but it's one of those things that we believe in each other. We know we were put on this earth to be with each other and to help people. And you can't break that. You can't break it. But you can tell your husband he is crazy <laughs> because you're looking at what is now 1222 North Pennsylvania, our new location um, that we ultimately did purchase on December 30th of uh, 2013. I think someone was trying to make a bonus at the end of the year. So, um, but we sat down with our contractor and the contractor said, you know, here's what everything's gonna cost. And for demolition, it was about $30,000 just to demo the building. This was a former Brinks security building. So everything was bulletproof. Uh, there's metal, uh, there's a vault in there. We left that, it's pretty cool. It's, it's actually the assessment room, the torture chamber, you know what I mean? Um, it's pretty cool. But here's Tony going, okay, $30,000. He goes, we can do that, signs us up. I'm sitting there going, what? He had me down in the dirtiest of dirty and there were times that I didn't even think I was gonna be able to do it. My arms were numb, my hands would fall asleep, he beat the crap out of his body. So I don't recommend this. I'm just gonna be real honest. Pay the 30 grand, it is worth it. <laughs> or make sure you have the 30 grand. We didn't have it. But ultimately, what I'm getting at here is we were MIA from our business for about six months. There's no way you can possibly do that if you haven't set a solid foundation and if you don't have a great team. And we have an amazing team that absolutely kept our business afloat that whole time. He was gone, working about 15 hour days, just trying to get that place going. He was power washing that building in 40 degree, <laughs> 40 degrees, it was February and March in Indianapolis that is not warm at all. And what's crazy too, and you talk about struggle, is we actually had a staff member come up to us one month before we opened and she goes, hey guys, um, I'm actually gonna go start my own business and we were just like, what, <laughs> really? So it was one of those things though, 12 clients left in that process. And I'll be honest, normally that would have just kicked me, but I'll be, I'll be quite frank, this whole process, I wouldn't say it's made you numb, but it's made you go, you can do anything. You don't need to worry about that. Those 12 clients, we can get more clients. That person was not in with our mission, our vision, and our core values. She didn't line up and it was okay for her to move on. And guess what? Now we go into our facility, it's gorgeous. The energy is amazing. The guys we have on staff are amazing. They work shifts. We have worked our butt off to make shifts. These guys work 5.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and leave. 12.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., done. They're all on a salary, they know their income, they're not just trying to train a bajillion sessions just to make a buck, and it's amazing, but it took that foundation. We also have two corporate accounts, um, and that honestly just happened from relationships and networking, and opportunities keep coming, and it's crazy. It, it, they just keep coming. You know, when you have the, the, the right people on the bus, um, you can do amazing things. When you, when, you, when you get those wrong people off the bus, uh, we have a good team now. Uh, we're getting ready to pull in more support staff. We, 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 had, to, we had to get pretty lean to, to purchase this place. Um, and our goal is 150 clients. That's what we're working towards right now. We're, we're sitting about 116. 
our average month, uh, monthly ticket is about 275. And then it, that would give us you know, 41,250 uh, monthly gross. Our expenses, we can hold those just based upon you know, having people on salaries, owning the facility. Um, you know, we, we've controlled a lot of our expenses. It's about 28,000 a month. So the business is very, uh, very profitable once we get it to a certain number. It, it's always been profitable for us, but there's, there's certain goals that we want, want to accomplish. And then I've been working on a nutrition system. Um, I, use, you know, I, I ramp all our clients up on the 24-day the, uh, the challenge through AdvoCare. Um, I've taught my staff how to utilize that tool. Um, so we're making extra income off that. They're making extra income off of it. It's helping us a win-win situation. Absolutely. And there, what you see is what we worked so hard. All the perseverance, the commitment, the hard work. We had the opportunity to meet John Gordon. And when talking to him, he said, you got to pick a word of the year. What's your word that you're going to focus on? And Tony and I said, intentional. We're going to get up every single day with intention, intention to act towards our goal. And that's how that happened. Thank you.